Welcome to Artflix on CBA TV. My name is Mutio Olawi, and today we are moving into Nepal. That's a country in the Asian world. They have got a lot of history that I feel by the time you look at the literary world of uh, the new guests we are having today, you get to understand how unique this country is. Meet me on the other side of the studio. Thank you once again for joining us. Um, as I've said earlier, we are in Nepal. And then we'll be dealing with uh, a great Nepalese uh, writer, uh, but that is uh, Chandra. Uh, Chandra has been a writer for over 15 years, and um, he writes more in uh, Nepali language. Um, and uh, he has published in different part of the globe. Uh, he has contributed to different anthologies and um, currently he publishes a book in English language. And um, we'll be discussing extensively this very powerful uh, book. Uh, but we need to know who are the Nepalese. How far have they gone in their life? Uh, through the literary binocular of uh, this great writer, Chandra. Uh, tell us briefly about the Nepalese and uh, the socio-political and cultural situation of the country. Nepal is a beautiful country between China and India. Uh, you must have seen in the map, globe. It's a Himalayan country and the highest Mount Everest of the world, that is in Nepal. And beside Mount Everest, there are some... Uh, seven more Himalayas, more than 800 feet in Nepal. And it's a very beautiful country. Uh, at the north, we have Tibetan border, that is China's. And in the south is India. And Nepal is famous for many things, uh, like uh, once I wrote you an email, uh, mm. Light of Asia. Lord Buddha, uh, he was born in Nepal and he started Buddhism. Now today Buddhism is uh, adopted, uh, uh, regarded in many countries of the world. So Buddha, he, he, he was born in Nepal. And beside these things, uh, Nepal is also famous for the uh, fighters, soldiers, Gurkha soldiers. Still we have large number of soldiers serving in British Army and in Indian Army, also in Singapore Police and we have many soldiers who won uh, bravery awards in World War First and Second. So in this way, Nepalese Gurkha soldiers are very famous in, all, uh, in the world for their bravery and fighting skills and they are famous for a knife, uh, kind of knife called Khukri, weapon. And uh, about uh, other things about Nepal, Nepal is an uh, agri agricultural country. Uh, most of people, they depend on agriculture. Uh, some two thirds of uh, population, they still uh, depend on agriculture. Agriculture. And uh, since, uh, as I told you, like uh, many of the Nepalese are serving as soldiers in British Army, Indian Army, Singapore Police and security guards. Uh, beside these, many others are in different countries all over the world. So, uh, main source of remittance uh, income for Nepal is remittances. Some 30% of uh, income source, it depends on remittances. Today we have a lot of Nepalese outside Nepal, in Malaysia, in Gulf countries, even myself, I am currently in Bahrain. Many Nepalese in European countries and uh, American countries. And uh, about the people of Nepal, there are more than 100 different ethnic groups in Nepal. 
and all these uh, ethnic groups they have their own culture they have their own traditions languages rituals religions uh, they have their own folklores dances songs uh, and they believe in different philosophies or philosophies so this diversity it has uh, maintained a kind of beauty cultural beauty in nepal uh, so, so what are, are some of the uh, uh, most common languages spoken in Nepal? Mm, as I informed earlier, there are more than 100 different ethnic groups in Nepal. And uh, these people, since they are from different groups, so their languages are also different. They have their own mother tongue, they have their own native languages. So, so earlier, Nepal was uh, like a uh, divided in different small states, and a king called Prithvi Narensa, he united the country. He united all these small states, different states, and uh, made Nepal. So what happened? Uh, uh, that's why like different states of different people of different languages, culture, they came and one country was formed, Nepal. So different people, they speak different languages, but most of the people, they speak Nepali language because Nepali, that is the language of rulers. The ruler who unified Nepal, he, this Nepali language belonged to him, his uh, clan and uh, that's why most of the people, some 40%, 45%, they speak Nepali language. And this Nepali today, it is our national language. And besides this, the border areas in the south, which are close to India, uh, different other languages are also spoken like uh, uh, Maithili, Bhojpuri. And these uh, languages are spoken in like uh, border areas, states of India also. And beside this, there are many other native languages. Newari people, they speak Newari language. Muggers, they, they have their own language. And Tamangs, Tharus, they have their own native uh, mother languages. But our national language is Nepali. And this Nepali, it is uh, written in Devanagari script, in Hindi. Uh, sorry to cut you short, um, uh, how about the influence of these languages on the literature of the country or, or the people of the country or the literary world of the people there? Um, um, almost Nepali literature has uh, completed um, one century, 100 years, more than 100 years. So earlier, mm. they, like in the beginning, uh, uh, these things like a literature or we can say other scripts, history, records, they were recorded in Sanskrit. Since Sanskrit is very close to Hindi and this Nepali language is also originated from Sanskrit only. So earlier this Sanskrit and Nevari language because uh, capital city of Nepal, Kathmandu, that is uh, civilized by Nevari people. So Nevari people, they are more in numbers in Kathmandu and so they, they used to speak Nevari language. So most of the ancient uh, history records, um, these things are, these things were in Sanskrit and Nevari. But later what happened when this uh, king from Gorkha, he united Nepal, then uh, the language of the rulers, that is Nepali language, it became effective. So its influence got increasing. So the first uh, um, talking about the written literature in Nepali, it was the Ramayana. Ramayana, mm. that is... Uh, that was firstly in Sanskrit, then it came in different languages of, of India. It was written in um, Hindi also and many other local languages of India. So this Ramayana, 
it was translated to nepali language and we regard it as the first uh, literature work in nepali language all right let's talk about the the literature of the uh, the nepalis uh, how did this start and how far has it gone just briefly uh, first uh, firstly like uh, all those ancient literature they were in sanskrit and uh, nepali languages then in 1768 when king prithvi narayan shah he united nepal then started literature in nepali language also orally and the first uh, first work literary work in nepali language i informed you it was in 1883 translation of ramayana in nepali language so this work is treated as the first literary work in nepali language and it became very famous as i informed you that uh, it was in very simple language people could easily understand and uh, this ramayana was already already famous in sanskrit and hindi so when people found it in nepali language then it became very famous very famous and also this ramayana attracted people towards literature and then started the writing nepali literary, literary writing in nepali language then after that uh, when bhanu bhakta wrote this thing ramayana then new age of nepali literature started i must confess uh, this is the first time i'm going to hear that um, the nepali literary uh, word uh, was rooted from india so indians have influence on the literary world of the nepalis that's very uh, surprising to me because i thought with the fact that you mentioned earlier that uh, buddhism started in uh, nepal so i was thinking that uh, there'll be um, control of that region from their part so they are more of um, warriors that fought wars in different part of uh, that uh, region uh, so the issue of education um, it came directly from india that's really interesting no wonder that um uh, we realize that uh, no one uh, is not really popular uh, but the, the literature of the country i mean the nepali literature is not uh, popular globally unlike the indian literature you can even see it in most of the syllabus um, uh, um, the syllabi of uh, the cambridge even american literature but we don't hear much uh, from the writers in the country now i guess to understand because initially i had wanted to ask you um what made the indian literature more popular than um, um the nepali uh, literature so anyway let's go into this uh, uh, for every demography there's always uh, a literary platform do you have something like that in the country where creative writers meet yeah we have an um, definitely writers uh, they will group up in uh, groups because whatever they write they they do discussions uh, so automatically the group of writers get created so nepal also have different groups of writers uh, they meet they discuss uh, some groups they are registered also together they have started many types of movements literary movements in literature so nepal has a good history of these types of groups creating different types of movements in literature and functioning together and these types of groups these types of movements uh, started by the group of writers they have Uh, given very strong foundation for the development of nepali literature i actually want to ask you um, uh, two question in one just having i uh, want you to use uh, one stone to kill two birds um are creative writers in the country really appreciated either by the government or the people uh and uh, two um 
do writers, they are related anyway, do writers earn a living through their writing? Is How easy it is to earn a living as a writer in Nepal uh, to earn a living through creative writing? Some, it's not like earlier days. Now the scene has changed. Uh, now a lot of publication houses have come and the sale of the books also not bad like in past in the past some writers are there full time writers they are writing without uh, they are do not uh, uh, involved in any kind of jobs they are full time writers and they are totally depending on writing so it's uh, for the good writers those who can write well they, they can survive on writing also this is the uh, present scenario that's really interesting to know that um um you are still developing bit by bit and um we could see that um writers uh getting appreciated bit by bit uh, that's uh, interesting to hear that thank you so much i think um our viewers at thomas have uh, got a little bit info about the country so we need to go for a break when we come back we now go into your own world to understand the terrain of uh, the nepalese see you there Out there. Tune in to CBA TV, the voice of East Africa and beyond. Uh, There's so many people around the world who are watching along with you. Thank you so much once again. Um, this is Atflix. If you are joining us for the first time, the only show in the entire Africa, not only in East Africa, where we give the voice to creative minds across the globe not only within africa and on that's on the tv um uh, we've got platforms in written form in magazine journals in different parts of uh, africa or even different parts of the world but not really as we do um on atflix because um, we prefer to not only put the voice in the paper we want everyone to hear the creative writers across the globe on the screen not only in paper so that's why we have at flex anyway today we are in another world we've been to different parts of the world now we're in nepal so and we will be dealing with the world of chandra uh we've explored the nepali word earlier and this time we want to use our own lenses to understand what has been happening um what um what has been happening since the um uh, the establishment or the independent or even pre-independence of uh, this uh, great country so true is own word we want to know what is even really happening now and uh, perhaps from his uh, writing we can even project what would happen to the country in the nearest uh, future so, uh, welcome uh, back uh, to the second part, uh, Chandra. Uh, tell us briefly about your journey to the literary world. Um, how did you start and how far have you gone? Uh, yeah, I started a little late. It was somewhere in 2003 when I was in Saudi Arabia. That time, some problems, political problems were there in Nepal like a mouse insurgency so in that contest nepalese they prefer to go out to work uh, many nepalese went to malaysia many numbers of nepalese came to the gulf countries and some to other countries so somewhere in 2003 i also uh, came to saudi arabia so 
when i reach saudi arabia new place different type of people culture then a kind of homesickness was there so in that time i started to write so i my writing started somewhere in in that time when i was in saudi arabia i stayed there for 3 years then when i went back i had good number of poems then i met the young poets there i came in their contact then they they encouraged me to bring out a book so in this way my first poetry collect collection came in 2007 hmm so your your well, number one homesickness took you i mean brought that inspiration to you um you weren't really involved in uh, creative writing um when you were in your country until you uh left the country for uh, Saudi Arabia um and then um the situation in the country too that's really interesting um uh, but i really want to understand deeply about uh this of the three genres of literature why did you opt for poetry there are other we have got the uh, plays i mean drama we've got uh, um prose but uh, why out of all the three genres of literature uh yeah i started with the poems and uh, still i am in love with poems and as you know my second collection of poems that is uh, coming very soon my father's face that is my second poetry collection and i is coming out from rubik publication publishing in new delhi india so i find poems the best poems are very fascinating and poems uh, some kind of attraction is there in poems whether it's reading the poems or writing the poems you can you can bring more things in poems i feel understood um uh, i want us to not waste our time because we've got, we've really explored the country um, um because we really want to know what is really happening the life of the people in your country right now and um so we need to go deeply into maybe exploration of a couple of your work um my father's face is a book that um, you recently published and uh you have a poem in the book titled my father's face what is that poem all about the poem titled my father's face from which i got the title for my second book this poem is little more special than the other poems because the, i have uh, spoken about a father who loves family family members so this po poem is very close to my heart i was actually I initially thinking is just going to be um a lit just a metaphorical um uh, description of maybe somebody a, a mentor so i really didn't know that um on uh, uh, that um you were this exploring the physical appearance of your dad in relation to his lifestyle with the people in the society and how how he really suffered to and sure that um it caters for people um in uh, at the detriment of his own um life uh, that's what you also copy because from what you've said earlier i could deduce you uh, outside trying to ensure that your people at home also smile especially your your mom and uh, your siblings um let's look at there's something maybe you didn't know uh, but from my observation of the book uh, you sent me earlier after reviewing everything i found out that um the first poem has to do with the father and you ended the poem with mother are you referring to your mom what is the poem all about yeah, yeah. that's a small short poem and uh, dedicated to mother like a uh, 
when the small rivers go away from hills but in the rainy season they come back again as rain and when the rain when they come back as rain then the earth is green and beautiful with the flowers welcoming the coming back of sun or children in the same way uh, i wanted to tell that when i come back or go back to my house from a uh, foreign country my mother also becomes happy this is the uh, thing i wanted to tell in that song, uh, that poem the most of the poems uh, they speak about the things around me uh, while in nepal or outside nepal the topics and themes of all these 47 numbers of poems uh, they are related to the issues things which are around me like uh, whether it's my bonding with my family friends or with my country or my country person or the problems faced by myself or the problems uh, faced by the nepalese people since uh, many many nepalese are abroad working outside out of nepal so many poems speak about their pro- 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 pains problems away from mother and motherland away from friends and family how they suffer how they feel most of the poems are about this and some poems are about the political and social uh, scenes in nepal the how the leaders they cheat the people how they play with the dreams of the people how they promise but they don't fulfill the promises some poems are like that some poems are about love humanity peace because this these things nepalese have suffered nepalese people they have uh, long for the peace prosperity but still these things are far away so my, most of the my poems are about these things only about myself my people my country uh, my society and my identity oh so it's directly uh, dedicated to your mom but uh, technically you you dedicate it to women generally so it's like um, uh, a tribute to women uh but from the character of your mom so you, you decided to uh, use that to depict the picture of uh, womanhood across the globe um i just i'll give you only one uh, maybe few minute to explore any other poem in the book or any of your favorite poem that you have that you feel that you want our viewers at home to um enjoy with you or to also maybe understand the value of its contents so it's for my father like all the fathers who think about family home so this is for my father and the title is my father's face two eyes glitter like the sun and the moon two eyes glitter like the sun and the moon in that face a kite of self confidence keeps flying beautiful orchids and rhododendron bloom combating the storms of calamities on that face a sun rises every morning to carry the burden of a new day and returns at the end of the day hiding every line of sorrows carrying little parcels of joy making the house and patio bright on that face narrow are the eyes that read the read the world pug is the nose that looms with raised 
self respect wrinkled are the cheeks where joys and sorrows glide chapped are the lips where smiles stay the march past and the entire mongol identity has been smoldered by heat but i am delighted happy beyond telling when everyone says you look exactly like your father uh, thank you so uh, chandra um i guess um we don't have much time i could i would have loved to be with you to continue to explore this um part this very important part of the globe through your literary work uh, but you know we have no time another time I, i'm very sure that um uh, we have uh, other platform to also do this together maybe when i invite um, asian writers and then you join hands together and then we go deeply into the interconnectedness among these uh, countries of uh, great literary giants um uh, your final words because this is our tradition you won't leave this without giving a message to our viewers at home what's your final message to them uh definitely i have so i have something like uh, these days lot of books lot of writers and lot of advertisement so i request the readers in my country or in some other country those who are listening me not listening me like i request them to go for the good writers good books not spending their wasting their money and time for the in the bad books and bad writers many writers are there writing for social causes for uh, good causes they are writing for truth they are writing for justice they are writing for the society so we have to support these types of writers thank you so much uh, chandra uh, dear viewers uh, you've heard from uh, this great writer you've seen how far the world of the nepalis have uh, gone from the genesis up to today and um, i guess when we meet next time we will go into another part of the world thank you for watching